G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now last time we got all the cannon port lids and the cannons are in and that whole broadside is starting to look very nice and I will be tying the cannons down on the deck. But that'll be in another video. For this video I want to concentrate on the beak and the bum. <laughs> yes, two things there. Now I had talked in the last video about this little lantern here and I need to do something with that. I want to make it look shiny. I considered making my own sort of cast piece out of clear resin. It's just all too much mucking around. I think there's a way that I could paint that so it looks shiny and it looks like it's a, it's a lamp um, and it fits in with all the other gilding and there's a way that maybe I can do that. Okay, that'll be in this video. And at this end, at the beak, well here, right, there should be a figurehead. Now the bottom part of it is there. I don't know if we can get this up so you can see it. But see, there's wings and there's legs. But what's missing is the torso, the head, the arms, and there's a little cherub or something, right? There's a little golden cherub there. And he's, um, he's cherubing away. So, how am I going to make that? I've got a cunning idea, and it involves Vikings. Yes, believe it or not. All right, well, those are the things that I'm going to try and achieve in this video. And if there's time, we'll get on the channel boards as well, and we might even start doing some dead eyes. Yep. Yep. We'll get on all of that. It'll all happen in good time, but for now, let's get on with this bloody thing. Roll the music. <laughs> now I first primed the lantern in yellow stonerase, but then I started to add something that's giving it quite a shine. And it's not my usual Molotow pen. No, not the Molotow chrome pen. It is Green Stuff World Chrome Metal, which is supposed to be an acrylic chrome that should thin with their proprietary acrylic thinner. But we'll talk about that later. Anyhow, this stuff goes on quite well. I must say I was reasonably impressed with it. And I've got a little brush here. I just use a scummy sort of brush when I'm doing metallics because I usually find metallic paint kind of buggers up the brushes. So I started by just filling in the uh, sections that would have been glass. So, you know, painting them in. It doesn't really matter if you spodge it everywhere because we're going to be painting gold over this, or well, sort of a brassy gold for the, um, the gilding. But I, you know, ha force a habit, always practice. So the fact that I don't need to do it doesn't matter. We, we practice. Okay. So this is where the problems arose. Went to clean that. There's your acrylic thinner. Nothing is coming off. Look, it's useless. It doesn't work. No. That acrylic thinner they say to buy for it does not work and it buggers up your brushes. So just be wary of that if you buy this stuff. Yes, it's a good chrome sort of paint. You can brush it on, self levels, it's nice and shiny, but no, it won't thin. You'll need something like Tamiya's airbrush cleaner. That's what I found I needed to clean it out and get the brush working again. Now the first coat went on very well, but I thought, oh, I felt it needed a second coat to get a really good shine especially if you brush painting. If you airbrush this, you probably get away with one layer, but then you're going to have to mask it and all the rest of it. I can be bothered. And I wanted to try it out and see what it was like to hand paint. And I must say, for hand painting, it's fairly good. I don't mind this stuff at all. So here's the result. It is pretty shiny. But what I need to do now is I'm going to start adding the gold for those rips. And to do this, I'll use my Posca pen. Now this is a Posca gold pen and has a really fine tip. You can get down to, you know, less than half a millimetre in width. So very carefully sliding up and down. Uh, even my wonky hands and bad old eyes, you just follow the bumps on the thing and that brings the shape out. And look at that. That's starting to look very lanternish already. Now it's time to do some detail painting and some effects on this. And first up, I use my life color paints to put the little red and blue. It's actually rot brown, which is the same color I've used all the way through the build. Now we're going to add this. This is a deck darkener, okay? And I've used this before in this build to give that effect around the windows. And like a wash, well, it is a wash, it basically brings out edges and detail and makes things pop out. Now there's not much detail in the middle of these because these are just panes of glass on a lantern as opposed to a window that had cross hatched sort of, you know, lead panels. But it is looking very nice against the edge of the gold because I know that worked before. And also I'm going to do another trick in a sec to highlight the shininess. So what we'll do is we'll use the remover. So I've painted that on, it's a bit sort of splodgy and messy, I know. What I'll do with the remover is I'll tidy things up. 
I'll tap it in the middle of all of those so that that leaves the shiny bit so it's only shiny and I've also used a fine brush which I didn't show to go over the gold and then touch up the gold again and when you've finished all that it looks great and there's the final result and I'm pretty happy with that it's achieved everything I want it's shiny it's um, hard to show on camera but it really does bounce out. I mean, you've only got to put it beside the ones I did on the side here, which were just, you know, windows into dark spaces, whereas this is supposed to be a reflective surface. Now it is. It's reflective. That wash helps define it and also just adds a little bit of randomness on it because, you know, it wouldn't be perfect. There'd be irregularities on it. So it just sort of brings it alive. I really like it. I really like the way that's turned out. Very, very happy with it. So that is my solution for turning this glob of plastic into something that um, looks like a lantern. And it sort of works. Works enough for me. And that's all I've got to... Uh, it's the only person that I've got to please is myself. So we'll just pop that into there. And that's how it looks in place. So how's that? I think that's the solution. Yeah. That works for me. Now, I've also got to add... The little crowns here because after I painted the top on there using that rot brown and the blue I realized I'd need to go all the way around and paint all of the little crowns that are sort of all around the ship on um, on top of these well they'd be sort of like little viewing rooms or whatever normally they're they're like officers quarters but that'd probably be the maybe um, well that's where they keep the wine and cheese so that's probably just the temperature control I don't know it's just a pretty little window there you know what that window is let me know but these ones here are on the officers quarters so you know that's where they basically they sit in their officers privy and they do the pithink yeah that's right they're french all that up now uh okay let's get on i'll just finish that little bit of detail painting and then we've got some more to do something very exciting that includes a duck a viking and a poo hmm interested If you're enjoying this video then please hit that like button because it really helps the algorithm and you can comment but just you know keep it respectful that'd be great and don't forget you could join the channel by subscribing and hitting that bell notification you won't miss any of my videos and if you really want to help me out well hit the super thanks and then I get a nice hit and some money to keep producing these videos all right let's get on with things so now the lantern is in place and yeah, I've touched up all those other little crowns because I figured, well, if this crown has sort of got that look, well, I should do the ones on the stern and then there are all the ones here on these little protrusions on the side here, these little windowed areas. Everything has got their crowns touched up and I really think that's made a big difference. It's certainly added a lot more detail to it. They really pop. So I like that. Won't go any further. But I'm so happy with how that's turned out because you see a difference between here. These were dull windows. So I did that, painted them grey, and then did the wash effect. Whereas here, painting it with the chrome first, and then adding the layers, it's much shinier. And it could be a lantern. So it sort of works. For plastic, I think that's not a bad effect. Not a bad effect at all. Now, I need to turn my attention to the other end of this uh, craft. Yep. Over here, there is that little cherub. So it's missing. As I said, we have got wings and we have got the start of the lower section, the legs. That's all we've got. But we should have a little cherub there. Now, I don't have one lying around, so that's always a problem. But I have these guys. If you've seen my um, review on that kit, I bought the oarsman. Now, I'm not going to waste any of my oarsmen. They're, um, they're all necessary for me to row 
that Viking ship, right? So I'll be keeping those. But they've got all these extra characters that I probably won't use. And there's three of these guys here that I call minstrels. I'm not quite sure what they're doing. Somebody said they think they are pulling ropes and setting sail. Sure. Well, I've got three of them, so I could use one to my ends here. And I can always cast more of those if I decide I need them. So how would I use that? Well, let's take him off. We'll do the old EFX trip and just twist. And here's our little guy. Now, we need a cherub who has an arm out. So I can have a figure posing. Now that big thing on his shoulder there. That's not a chip on his shoulder. That's just a bit of the plastic I've got to remove from this yet. So uh, just use your imagination. So I'll tidy him up. And what I'll do is I will cut him. Ooh, probably... Probably just, well, we'll cut him at the bottom of his tunic, see how that is, and then I'll work my way up to the belt at the point I feel that's enough, and I won't be able to go any further. So, let's do that. So, using a milliput turd that I'd made. I just cut the top of it off, slice the top of that little turd. That was just some leftover milliput. It was rolled into a sausage and I sort of humorously made it a turd. I used to leave it lying around all the time in various shots. And removing the bottom half of my poor old Viking and slowly slicing him down till he fit, I've got this. Now he's a bit chunkier than the one in the Airfix box hut. I know, and I'll probably sand him down a little bit and, um, you know, see if I can get him a bit smoother. But look, he's been hanging around on the prow of this ship for ages now and, and you know, he hasn't been getting an exercise. He's chunked up. Let's face it, he's a modern American figurehead. Yep, sitting on the sofa eating burgers. He's a chunky fella. Alrighty, well, I'll uh, clean this up now and then paint it up and I think we've got something that's certainly better than nothing and it looks like a figurehead. Well, after much sanding and scraping, I have got the top half of this little fella looking okay. I also put a little pommel on his sword. He didn't have that before. And the um, chicken down here, <laughs> I've got primer on that as well. Now, I didn't glue the guy on because I thought it would be easier. He's all gold and his legs are gold, and but the chicken's white and the wings are white. So I thought it would be easier to paint them separately and then see how I go when I put them together. I can always bit of putty and touch up but it would be a little tricky to try and paint the gold when he's there sitting across the top of the chicken trying to cut its head off all right so what we'll do now is get out the posca pen and we'll put some gold on this There you go. I've achieved the things that I want to do in this video. Well, as far as the stern and the bow goes, this um, little lantern, that's terrific. I like it. It's shiny. Look at how it, it glows there compared to the other windows. That looks good. My little fella here, he's tiny and in a little scheme of things, really, he may not be noticed so much. I mean, why put so much work into it? Well, if you didn't have him, he'd be noticed due to his absence. So by having him there, he just fills that space and he's a thing that's supposed to be there. 
fact that he's not completely 100% accurate doesn't matter. doesn't matter at all because anyone who looks at this goes, oh, look, there's a little chicken there with something writing it. Yep, you got a figurehead. Good. Job done. And that's all you've got to do. And I had a lot of fun converting a Viking sort of soldier, a little uh, figure, um, plus adding a few other bits and making my little duck. Sure, they're all fat, but hey, you know, this is the problem with the Western world at the moment. We're all too chunky. We're all eating too much. And it's and it's spilled over into our model making. Yeah, our figureheads have got fat. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Lantern, love it. Shiny. Duck works really good. That's terrific. Now, I talked about doing the channel boards. And that's going to be a video in itself because it's taken me quite a bit to explain and show you how I've done these two things. And I really want to go into detail as to how to fix up these awful parts. Now look at that. Flash City. Look at it. It's just disgusting. If you'd seen my bounty video, you know I sort of cleaned all that out and I used these, which are basically the, the dead eyes with the channel lines between them, right? And these are the channel boards and those are the chains that go down to the hull, right? Because these sit here on the side of the hull and that's where all the lines run down, all the shrouds run down for your rat lights. So these are very important things. And some people put them on before they start painting. I haven't. I always forget them. But they're not hard to put on afterwards. And anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use those little things there. I'm going to put my own support chain, although it'll probably just be a wire at the scale. It's a little bit too hard for me to do a chain. Don't know. Unless someone's got a good solution for that. But I'm just going to put a wire in. That wire will go up to a dead eye. Okay. And we'll thread that in. We'll do all that. All of these get cut off. I'm not going to worry about cleaning out the flash. I'm just going to cut that, right? But I'll have to make sure I remember where all the spaces are for the hole. So there's quite a bit of work to be done to make sure that I don't bugger this completely, that I get all the holes in the right position, that I get my wire in and my dead eyes, and, and then we, you know, get all that together. Then we can start adding the stays, right? All the forward stays, our shrouds in, and it'll start coming together. So that'll be good. I'll probably help if I cement in my uh, mast as well. Yeah, she'll really start looking like a ship then. So that's what we've got to look forward to in the next video. So I hope you'll hang around for that one. So as I said before, look, you know, you can support me in many ways. Certainly clicking like pushes that algorithm along and making comments and, um, you know, subscribing to the channel really helps. All the things sort of boost that little robot and tells it that, oh, people do actually watch Harry Denny. Oh, good. We might send some more viewers his way. And that's really good. And a big shout out to my Patreons and YouTube members whose support really makes a difference for me being here on YouTube. Now, look, if you'd like to join Patreon or YouTube, you just got to come up with a monthly amount and it can be for as little as a dollar, as maximum of $50 a month, you know, or something in between. Anything that you can afford really helps. And for that, I'll give you the videos a day early, advert free. You'll also get basically notices nearly every day of what's going on and more detail and background stuff of what's happening and a few cat jokes and a whole lot of other things that the um, general viewers of the channel don't get to see. So it's a lot of the behind the scenes action. Plus you can communicate with me directly, ask me questions about the builds. There's a lot more going on Patreon and YouTube members. So if you want more of an experience and get deeper into my channel and have a relationship with me, <laughs> for what that's worth, yeah, please consider donating to Patreon or YouTube members. All right, well, that's about all I've got to say for this video. So like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. It's goodbye from Australia and it's hooroo from Harry Udini.